Hey gents, it is Wednesday, which is when I like to talk about the menswear industry as a whole. And I came across an article last night from Joe Thompson over at Hodinkee that has just been churning with me overnight. It's about the way that the Apple Watch has come in and basically wiping the floor with fashion watches and really threatening that industry. So I just wanna put in my two cents on why I think that is the case, why Fossils and the Swatch Group are really feeling that pain and some of the ways that that's really playing out in the watch world as a whole. As we jump in, make sure you subscribe to my channel to learn about the best menswear on the internet that is from clothing, style, fashion, uh, grooming, hair, and everything else. And then also comment below on what are some of the companies and the, the watches specifically that are, you are really excited about right now. Uh, because there's some really cool stuff and it's really hard to keep track of the just dozens and, and even hundreds of brands that are doing cool things in the watch world. The Apple Watch debuted in 2015 to some pretty big fanfare. Apple really knows how to get uh, both the technologists and in this case the fashion side of the business really excited about things. They had a very unique approach to launching this product and when it came out watchmakers were saying oh you know this isn't a big deal. Specifically a lot of the Swiss watchmakers were saying that the Apple Watch is only going to encourage more watch sales themselves because people will learn about the Apple Watch and then they'll step up to a more traditional mechanical timepiece and this is the you know the higher end swatch group brands like Omega and then even like Rolex they weren't saying I don't know they said it specifically but in their minds you know if a person is going to buy a watch they're going to end up getting something uh, much more high-end and much more traditional. Every company that was dismissive of the watch brings back some memories to, uh, you know, their Steve Ballmer when the iPhone was launched or the Palm CEO when, when the iPhone was launched saying, uh, you know, these guys aren't just gonna walk in here and disrupt an industry. Well, it's starting to happen. But it's happening in one specific category, and that is the fashion watch group. And I would say that it's the watches that are like under $600. I think once you start to, that's a real, real tipping point where if somebody's going to spend more than six to $800 on a watch, that's when they're considering, I could get something more traditional, I can get something more mechanical instead of going with a smart device or, or, or an Apple watch. This is also a tough problem for the traditional companies because a watch is something that most people will only wear one at a time. And not a lot of people are going to have a whole like range of them. You're either going have one or two you know you have a dress and an every day or you're going to have you know just one watch and so if somebody's going to plunk down two to four hundred dollars on an Apple watch they're not even going to consider something from you know the Michael Kors or any of the other fossil brands now fossil is a huge company they do over three billion dollars on mostly watches they do have some accessories and other things but I'll just throw up they have 17 brands and 11 licensed companies that they make watches for so there's a chance that you know if not all of these brands. And there should be a lot of credit given to Fossil because as soon as they saw the threat, they started making moves into this category. They bought the company Misfit, which made smart devices for north of $200 million, and they started to launch new products where they were integrating smart technology. So they've got some hybrid connected movements and they've got some smart watches that are pure screens. And so they're really trying to compete on the technology front, but it's really tough to compete with Apple directly on form, functionality, and design, and especially price. Apple can manufacture things at such a large scale and keep those costs down and have the technological expertise whereas fossil this isn't their uh, their bread and butter and so they're really trying to compete on the prices that Apple is setting instead of charging what they might need to in order to make back their R&D costs and to make back just their cost of goods sold and you can pinpoint when the Apple watch came out if you look at fossils earnings they really peaked and they've slowly declined since then and at the same time that you're seeing the smartwatch devices grow, you're also seeing companies come in. And these are the ones that all of the YouTube channels are talking about. I talked about it in my previous video. You're seeing the rise of the fifth. You're seeing the rise of Movement or MVMT. You're seeing Daniel Wellington. And so at the same time, you've got the Apple and the technologies coming into the space. You've got a lot of startup small brands that are competing in the same price points with much more savvy marketing. You know, Fossil is really the ones that these companies are talking about disrupting. They're saying they're cutting out the middleman, which are are the retailers that Fossil sells into, makes a lot of their money from, and then goes directly to the customer because Fossil doesn't have that direct relationship with the customer. And so not only are you seeing Apple come in and fight on technology, but you're seeing other small brands come in, fight on price, not necessarily quality, but also on design language. If you've got a company that is really getting their brand out there like movement, flooding Instagram with ads with influencers and other people, it's gonna be really tough to compete against that when you've got someone like Skagen, which is kind of a more traditional brand that's owned by Fossil, but they're not doing the same type of guerrilla or uh, influencer marketing that Movement is doing, which is really how they've grown to this 
point. But there you have it. I think it's a super interesting space to watch right now. Now, I am not an Apple Watch guy myself. I've talked about my Wythings smartwatch that I really like. It's a tra traditional looking watch, but it has Bluetooth connected movement. But I think my journey into the watch world is very emblematic of others that are starting to make this transition. I do think that if you start out with an Apple Watch and you start to get used to having functionality and time on your wrist, then you will start to fall into the world of watches and if you're at all interested in some of the mechanical or the historical pieces you know I have been wearing watches for the past few years and I started out with just you know a Swiss Railways quartz design watch I love having the, the watch on my wrist and then over the last few years I've progressed and I picked up my first Omega Seamaster like six or seven weeks ago I put a video up on the channel for that and so I do think that there is going to be this uh, graduation of people who have smart watches they'll really enjoy that and then they'll start to understand uh, the watch world itself or you start to get into something like a Hamilton and Tissot or up into the Omega sphere because you do start to appreciate horology itself. So there you have it, gents. Let me know what you are excited about in the watch world right now, whether it's a brand or something like Watch Gang. I just have been doing those unboxings every month and it's been very interesting to discover some of these micro brands, but also some of the bigger ones that are out there and just have the opportunity to wear them on my wrist and le really learn about the, the industry. I'm looking forward to diving in deeper to the menswear world with you in this series and any suggestions and things you might want to learn about, let me know in the comments below. Also, you can also reach out at the underscore Cavalier on Twitter and Instagram. Love to hear from you guys over there. Until next time, gents, this is the Cavalier. Love of my life, gone forever. Love of my life, gone for good. Love of my life, gone forever. It's okay now. Open up now. Bow, 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 bow.